It's Saturday, March 18th here at the West End Gun Club. It's actually a windy morning here today. I didn't anticipate it to be windy. The weather forecasts at around 10 mile an hour winds, but it's definitely blowing above 10 right now, at least 15 gusts. If you hear something worrying, it's my wind meter on that flag, or my, sorry, my wind meter on that custom wind vane that I made that's sitting on my, my mod dose. Anyway, while I was sitting up, somebody walked up the road behind me because I'm here at the 300 yard pad and apparently he got stuck up on the ridge. He's not a member of the club. He walked down here because he saw people down here. He asked if I can pull him out because uh, there's a bunch of forest roads up around our range property. And I kind of felt bad because I declined it. I am very hesitant to go up that way because right now it rained heavily the past few days again. And the creek is actually kind of deep. Um, and if you don't have a high clearance vehicle with you know, four-wheel drive, you're not gonna make it through, but I do not want to go up there, uh, you know, tr try to do a recovery. You know, I'm not a professional or anything. And that road up there is considered unsafe by club members because, you know, some people come in the back end if the creek is too too deep, but the back way, those roads get washed out. And given, considering we had a few inches of rain over a course of like 16 hours a few days ago, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So I kind of felt bad, but I said, hey, I'm, I'm really not, comfortable to try to rescue drive up that road so i don't know it, it makes me feel bad to say that but unfortunately you know it's just i have to consider my own safety to drive up there but i asked if he was able to call out and he said he's got people to come so if he's got people to come help him i mean i'll have to rely on i have to you know defer to them because i mean i'd rather him call other his own folks or professionals to go do the recovery anyway i mean all that's in the back of my mind I'm gonna do some shooting here. I brought the Lapua long range, the super long range, that new ammo. I've had a brick of each for the past several weeks, but I've been holding off on testing it out and I was gonna find a good day to come out and do it. I was hoping to come out when my buddy here, who's also the RO, was gonna be here, but he's not working because the range has been closed the past several weeks. And I wanted him to be here because I wanted him to run it through his Rimex. So rather than wait a little bit longer and for a fair weather day, I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot some today. So I know I'm probably gonna have some pretty sketchy results at 100 and 200 yards, the, super, the long range, the super long range ammo. And then people are gonna jump on and say, hey, your gun sucks or the ammo sucks or whatever, but just keep in mind windy conditions or whatever, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, it seems like it's coming in straight on, but it is tailing off quite a bit. So it's kind of, kind of fishtailing. Uh, but it's straight on and hopefully it won't affect it too much. But let's let's just try it and see what it looks like on paper. As you can see here, we got the Lapua long range ammo and the Lapua super long range ammo. This I've had these for several weeks, as I said before. This is the brand new ammo that came out from Lapua. It was announced pre Shot Show 2023. I've had these for several weeks and I think this is part of the first shipment that came out to the US. Got it from Creedmoor Sports. They sold out pretty quickly. But it's readily available now if you want. I know a few vendors who have it in stock if you're willing to pay for it. Um, I think it won't sell out very quickly because of the price. I can't recall off the top of my head, but I believe it's about $22 and 25, $26 or $27 for long range versus super long range for a box of 50. So you're talking over $200 a brick. And most people aren't gonna pay that, right? That's beyond 10X prices. Ely 10X, I think you can get for about under $200 a brick. So this is pretty specialty ammo. I'm not entirely sure how well it's gonna shoot. I haven't watched the reviews. There's already been reviews out there from kind of more seasoned, experienced from fire shooters. And, you know, I, but I still wanna see how it works for me. And again, <laughs> terrible conditions to try this stuff out in, but you know, I had nothing else to do this Saturday. And so we're gonna see how well it goes. Got the lab radar set up. I'm not sure if it's gonna work well considering the uh, microphone might pick up the wind gusts but uh, we'll make the best of it and the sun's starting to come out so I need to get my sunglasses. But let's start shooting.
I showed off the Sharps Mountain Outdoor Gear Range Office in the last range vlog, but I've got it tricked out a little bit more from when you last saw it. Kind of add this orange paracord, replace the coyote one with orange just to make it look a little bit more cooler. And I can easily identify it when I see it on the range as mine, hopefully. Uh, I got a couple of Armageddon Gear AICS pouches on the front because it's Molly attached. And then I have some AICS mags here, but of course, you know, my Voodoo mags fit just fine. So I can keep a couple mags on this the range office and then when you stow it down you can see here i have the pouch still and i put like some little things in here i can have my a safety flag just in case i i lose my primary one i can have a backup here um i have my kestrel in the pouch here and i have my kestrel shot timer here just clipped on here i have this cool pen pouch that i found on amazon it is made in china sorry um, but it's hook and loop. So this hook on the, on the backside that attaches to loop and then there's loop on the front side. So you can add more patches or whatever. I think military people use this on their BDUs. They put on their, on their, on their sleeve, on their, on their mill blouse or whatever. And they put pens and I have it here just to hold these wet erase pens or China markers for my vinyl cards that I have for my Coltac shot, um, Coltac shot, my Coltac dope holder on my scope. And I can keep one here and I can keep one on the gun and I can just write down my dope for the next, for the stage or the next stage right there. And I can slap it there. Um, it's kind of cool. These pen pouches. Um, it is made in China. Like I said, I think there's us made ones, but I, you know, I just found this on Amazon. I'm not entirely sure if they're allowed to use this in the military. If it's made in China, I thought there was very compliance where it had all their textile stuff had to be us made to be uh, military uh, approved, but I don't know, whatever. Um, it's not really an issue for me. Anyway, the whole goal of this is so I can have a nice, easy way to stow a bunch of my accessories while I'm at the range, at a match. Uh, as a match director, I'm always moving from stage to stage, and I've got a lot of crap to, to carry. And I, you know, you'll see me, if you're, if you're ever at a match and I'm running at the NRL 22 matches, that I'm always moving around because I always leave stuff, whether it's a bag, the Kestrel, the shot timer, the tablet at least for practice score, my mags or whatever. You know, I'm just kind of, I've got so much stuff going on. I'm just trying to find easier ways to keep myself organized. So hopefully this will help me out a little bit where I can just quickly put, you know, a notebook or whatever, slap it in here, have this on my tripod and just move from stage to stage and hopefully have everything ready to go. I don't have a tablet with me. These tablets will practice score for our matches, but I can just throw it in here, cinch this up, move to the next stage, still have magazines as well as the magazine. I have my belt because I have my blue alpha, my blue alpha gear belt with AICS mag pouches on it. So hopefully this will help me keep a little bit organized. And I, I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, once we get a little more use out of this, I'll show, you know, I'll have a review of it, but you know, so far I think this is a pretty nifty item. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and shoot some six, five Creed more. Cause I, bring, I did bring out the Savage. I just want to put a couple groups on paper at 200 yards. Then we'll bring it all in. I'll show you what the Lapua long range and super long range looks like on paper, which is terrible in today's winds. And I did shoot a control group with Ely match just to show you how bad the wind is today.
I'm gonna go ahead and show you the groups at 100 yards with the Lapo long range and super long range. Top target right here is the long range, bottom target super long range. So uh, just keep in mind the velocities I got may not be valid because again, it was very difficult to get velocities of the lab radar in the wind because the microphone on the lab radar is picking up gusts as shots and therefore it could get errant data. However, that being said, it's roughly 10 90 feet per second for long range compared to super long range, which is around uh, a little bit faster. I'm not sure if that's was the case. Anyway, that being said, uh, this is the first 10 shot group, uh, not covered by my hand. As you can see, you got a lot of left to right dispersion. Uh, again, I think it's the wind, but just keep this in mind, that's about a three inch group right there. Uh, the next group here is about a, call it about a two inch group. Uh, I was trying to shoot it as fast as I could in the same wind condition. Um, you're about two, sh two inches here, but the vertical dispersion, the horizontal dispersion is not too bad. It's about an inch, which that's pretty good, but you got a lot of left to right uh, windage dispersion. Now, if we're looking at super long range, uh, you got the same windage dispersion, kind of. Uh, we're talking about a two inch windage dispersion. Now, the vertical is, is worse than long range. However, it's about an inch and a quarter maybe, but you can see where it's, ten it's tending the group there. Uh, the second group was not all that great. Uh, Again, I had a flyer here, or it could be the wind, um, but left to right dispersion. I'm showing you this, keep in mind, today's conditions, about 15 mile an hour gusts. It's a, it's a face on wind that, that is tailing out and fishtailing. So, um, you know, just, just keep that in mind, right? I mean, a lot of people look in these groups at face value and like, oh, it's shooting like crap or your rifle sucks, et cetera. But, and it could be the lot, who knows? But we'll find a better day to shoot. But I, I definitely wanted to show this to you just so you, you saw that we're actually trying to do something today uh, during this range session. Let's go ahead and show you the 200 yard target. I only shot Lapua super long range at 200 yards. I took a guess and just dialed six mils and I was aiming for this point. I only got eight shots on paper. I'm gonna guess that I think this one and this one might have been super long range that came off target. But I was aiming here, I believe, and you can see it's kind of very dispersed here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight shots on target here, two or somewhere here. And I saw it arcing in pretty hard. When, um, you can actually see the round coming in and it looks like it's going over the top, but it's actually diving back down. So again, 200 yards, take this to face value. Um, I definitely need to find a better day to shoot this, but this is what we have. And I just want to show it to you because, hey, this is what we got today. Uh, if you want to poke, peek a little bit here to the left, upper left here, I don't know, can I, aim? I'm going to have to re-aim it. Can I, re yeah, let's re the camera here. Upper left here, this is the Savage. I shot 10 rounds here. This is the first group, five rounds, one, two, three, four, five. I was aiming here. That's a nice one and a, about one and a half, one, about one and a half, one and a quarter inch at 200 yards, which is really good. And this is the second five shot group. That's way under an inch there. So, I mean, this Savage 10 FB, it shoots pretty good with the shillin barrel. It's just their standard button rifled shillin, uh, one and eight twist. 24 inch it shoots you know half minute right there pretty easily um but yeah it's a good it's a good shooting gun it's just it's a savage so the action is pretty ch chattery packing it in is the wind has not let up it's just getting you know it's gusting the 15 plus did what we could today unfortunately you know it's you know it is what it is i hope to come out here in a better range day better conditions in order to truly test La Pua long range and super long range. I'd like to, again, as I mentioned, I'd like to come out here when my buddy's out here with his Rimex so we can have another rifle here as a comparison because I know my, my Voodoo is a little finicky when it comes to La Pua lots. Um, some of the Center X stuff, some lots don't shoot very well. So uh, it's very picky on lots, but it's, so it would be nice to have another, another rifle there to compare. Um, that being said, uh, pretty much took care of other things I wanted to take care of. I did acquire the loophole, I think they call them these Alumina or whatever, Aluma flip-up covers. These are pretty nice. They're made by loophole. They're kind of expensive, actually. I think they price them at triple digits per, which is insanely expensive. But you can get it from other retailers, authorized, dealer, authorized retailers for half the price. So that's what I did. But they thread into the internal threads of the eyepiece and the objective bell. And uh, sorry, my wind meter is just worrying because it's windy. Um, but it, it, it threads into the objective bell and that's, and it just tightens up there. So it's pretty cool. 
they're pretty, they're aluminum and they're pretty nice. I think these magnets to hold them in and then just flip up and they flip back. They're really expensive, but they're pretty cool. Um, and the Savage shot pretty well today. Half, an, half MOA, it's pretty good. Um, range office looks pretty cool. I mean, again, I showed that off earlier. It's got some photos of this thing. I am messing around with a new uh, neutral, uh, neutral density filter because uh, my variable ND, I've noticed it's a Singray. Um, they came out several years ago. I bought it maybe 10 plus years ago. It's really good, but on video, it seems to result in hazy video. So I'm trying to fix polarizer. This is a B, BW, which is very well known in the photography industry for filters. I have I use BW filters for other things, but I decided to get just a, a, a three-stop neutral density filter. We'll see if this looks any better when I'm editing this. Hopefully it does, uh, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, range conditions still jacked up. They've had the range closed for several weeks now. I don't know if we're going to have our match. I am crossing my fingers. We're going to have another three days of rain, I think on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Not supposed to see that heavy. Uh, but hopefully we'll get an assessment on Wednesday, Thursday, whether or not the range staff is going to fix the road because it's pretty rutted. The creek is kind of jacked up. It's flowing a little fast, but it's just kind of got rocks all over the place. So if you don't have a good vehicle, you're going to get stuck. But hopefully they can level that out this week because our match is supposed to be uh, this upcoming Sunday, the 26th for NRL 22. If we don't have it, that means we've canceled December, January, February, and then now March. That would be four months in a row. We've already canceled three months. It would suck to cancel four. Fingers crossed. Anyway, that's it for today. I want to get out of here because I'm tired of hearing my wind meter whirring at me. Uh, today is Saturday, March 18th here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.